Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now a few weeks ago, I had a bit of spare time, did one of my kind of side projects, which I'm sure uh, all of us do. And the result of it was actually, I came out with a kind of a basic interpreter, you know, basic, that programming language from, you know, the 80s and, uh, and 90s. And in this video, I want to tell you all about it and ask for your help, because I want to know what should I do with this basic interpreter that I've now got. Okay, so if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so I wrote a basic interpreter. Now, what should I do with it? So basic, what is it? So it stands for Beginners All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code Basic. It's been around for decades, but it's very easy to learn. In fact, I wrote my first basic program, like many, many other people back in the days of 8-bit computers. So I was 10 years old and I did it on a Sinclair ZX80. And there have been very many popular versions of basic over time, including the Sinclair basic, Commodore basic, BBC basic, and the kind of the PC age, quick basic, visual basic. And they all use this kind of standard uh, way of doing things, but they're all slightly different. They've all got different ways of learn the individual things, but the general overall uh, idea is the same. And so this is what a very simple basic program would look like. Back in the day, we would go into an electronic store, they would have 8-bit computers out on display and you could kind of type this in, you know, print Gary Explains it. It wasn't then Gary Explains, of course. Uh, you just put Gary was here or something and then go to 10. 10 is what's called a line number. So this is line 10, this is line 20. Go to 10, we'll jump back to here and it would just scroll Gary Explains, Gary was here uh, up on the screen. And that was my introduction really at that age to computer programming. So this video is going to be split into three main parts. I'm going to demonstrate the basic interpreter that I've written. I'm going to give you an overview of its development. And then we're going to talk about what should I do with it. And part of that also means me to come up with a good name. Okay, let's go over to the command line and let's give it a spin. Okay, so here I am inside of Linux. In fact, this is the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, this will also compile on Mac OS without any problem and a Windows version wouldn't be too hard to make, although I actually haven't tried that right now. So first we're gonna look at the first uh, demo program, .bass for basic, very simple, loop, print Gary Explains, sleep for one second, go to loop. So it just keeps going around printing out Gary Explains uh, every second. So we do ubass and then demo1.bass, and there we go, Gary explains, Gary explains, Gary explains, pretty simple. Okay, let's look at the second demo, so demo2 that I've got here, 4i is equal to 1 to 10, so this is a for loop, let x equal to a random integer, print x, next i go round in the loop. So we're gonna get 10 random numbers out of here, so again ubass, demo2.bass, and there we go, 10 random numbers have come out. And then the final demo here, just to show you, is the old uh, 99 bottles of soda on the wall, but it does it using a, a loop. Uh, 4a is equal to 1 to 99, uh, and then goes through, and then it works out at each different point whether it needs to use the word, you know, bottle, bottles, or no more, and, and all that kind of stuff. Just a bit of logic in there, so it prints it all out automatically. So we can run that as well. So we can say demo 3, and we're going to just pipe it uh, into more here so we can see all the outputs. There we go, 99 bottles of soda on the wall, 99 bottles of soda, take one down, pass it around, 98 bottles of soda on the wall, and we keep on going right down now to the end. One bottle of soda on the wall, one bottle of soda, take it down, pass it around, no more bottles of soda on the wall, no more bottles of soda on the wall, no more bottles of soda, go to the store, buy some more 99 bottles of soda on the wall, and then of course you could start again. But this is just to show you, you know, that the, this is a fairly well developed uh, basic uh, interpreter. There's quite a lot going on there to do with loops and if statements and strings uh, and it's able to to work it all out. I'd also like to thank the sponsor of this video, Cali Case. It's the must-have accessory for vacation or traveling anytime you go near water. It's not just a waterproof case, it floats so you don't lose your phone. Now you can concentrate on actually enjoying your holiday, your journey, your adventure, rather than worrying about your phone sinking to the bottom of whatever lake or river it is that you are visiting. And more than that, you can still use your camera while it's inside of the case, so you can still take great photos and and video while underwater. Use the coupon code Gary Explains to get 15% off. Check out the link in the description below to find out more details. 
Okay, so how did I get this? Well, it all started with a project that's on uh, GitHub by Adam Dunkels called uh, UBASIC, MicroBASIC. And these are his words, a really simple basic interpreter written in a couple of hours for fun. It ended up being used in a bunch of places and this was written in 2006. It's under a permissive license, that's why I was able to use it. Uh, and there's the GitHub link to it if you'd like to check it out. Now I took Adam's basic interpreter because he'd done a lot of the, the plumbing. Uh, so I was able to then start to build on top of that. Now here is an example program that he gives uh, for uh, testing to make sure it kind of, you know, just make sure it works. And so line 10 goes up to line 100. Line 100 is down here. Print subroutine. Go sub means go to subroutine. A subroutine is something that returns to the point where it left off. 100, line 110 return goes back to here. Four i is equal to 1 to 10. This is a loop. Print i. Next i. So this goes round and round printing numbers 1 to 10. And then finally it will print end. And then the program will end. So what you'll see on the screen is subroutine 1 to 10 and then end. So this is his program. But the notice the thing is these line numbers. Now line numbers really aren't something that we really use today at all. And so the first task I gave myself was to get rid of the line numbers. So here is the same program that you run under my version of his uh, basic interpreter without line numbers. And so now you have labels. So you say go sub a sub with a colon at the end. A sub is down here, print subroutine, returns back to here, for loop is the same, print i, next i, print end, and then end all the same, but no line numbers. So this will produce the same output, subroutine, one to 10, and then end. And that was the biggest change I made to start with because I really didn't want the line numbers and it's much easier to edit basic code without all those uh, line number worries. And then after that, I kind of started getting into it. So I added string variables. So you can say let z dollar equal to the string hello. I added floating point numbers, z hash or z sharp 1.234 i added some built-in functions zero which is which is a good way of testing it just returns zero random integer not time i had some other ones sleep delay randomize i invented a put in a kind of a, a stack system push and pop some other mathematical things cosine sine square root and so on and even a call to uh to make os calls called os which call the system function in c which will then call out whatever it is going to do so i started adding in all these things it's built up quite significantly by adding all those things particularly by adding in strings and floating point numbers and the ability to add in built-in functions which this can all be extended now as much as as rich as coding literally it's just coding you want to add a new function which is add a new built-in function just add it you know whatever and that's what uh, that's what i've done however there are still lots of things that need to be changed for example variable names can only be one letter as a hangover from Adam's version, no negative numbers yet. For loops can only use integers, so you can't, you know, go from 1.1 to 1.9 in steps of 0.1 or anything. There is no reverse loops; you can't go from 10 down to one. No way to do uh, not equals. There's no other loop constructs. There's no while loop, no repeat loop, and so much more. And these are just some of the things that just come to my head. So there's such vast area of things that could be expanded on and developed and improved. But when I got to this point, having added in the strings and the floats and kind of it was able to do, you know, some mathematical things, I thought to myself, what's the what's the purpose? I could just go off in any direction now, but I need to know the purpose. So what should I do with it? So that's really the point I'm up to now. Of course, one is nothing. Yeah, it was fun. I spent a few hours kind of uh, making it better. I'll put it on GitHub and that's it. People can do whatever they want with it. I could develop it for microcontrollers like the Raspberry Pi Pico could be a, a like people have Python on there, micro Python. I could put on this version of basic. I could add in support for GPIO pins and so on uh, and interrupts. We could we could do that. I could develop it for games, make it an easy way of creating uh, games using something like SDL, add some surprise support and some uh, music support and kind of be a quick way of creating games. I could develop it for desktop. So we could do something like WX widgets and we could have just ways of opening up windows and adding toolbars and things like that. It would be cross platform. It would work you know, on Mac OS, Linux and Windows and so on something else i mean this is why i need your help what would this be good for 
uh, or nothing. I'm, I'm also happy with the answer of nothing. It was just a fun project. Uh, this isn't uh, rocket science. This isn't revolutionary. There are plenty of basic interpreters out there, plenty of other languages like uh, like Python, like Lua, and so on that can all be extended and can all be played around with. Uh, what do you think? Should I pick up this and run further? Really, I would really appreciate your input. And talking about that, it needs a good name. Originally, it was called UBasic, Micro Basic, the U there for micro. And if you turn, go into a thesaurus, you know, you get all these synonyms, tiny, small, mini, pico, fun size, nano token, itsy bitsy, titchy, tiddly, and so on, you know. So we have fun basic or baby basic or dinky basic, uh, pico basic, you know, uh, Itsy bitsy basic. I mean, it all depends, of course, on what we're doing, what I want to do with it. I mean, it, what, what direction it goes, and maybe calling something toy might not be good if it's going to be uh, aimed in a particular place. But if it's aimed for microcontrollers, then you know, having it itty bitty or titchy or pico, they might be a good idea. So it really does depend on it. So again, any ideas about name and a purpose would be, uh, you know, really well received at my end. So there it is. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.